Hi everyone. My name is Paul, and I'll be presenting our work on investigating and removing bias in sentence representations. As natural language processing methods are increasingly deployed in real-world scenarios such as healthcare, legal systems, and social science, it becomes necessary to recognize the role they potentially play in shaping social biases and stereotypes. Previous work has revealed the presence of social biases in widely used word embeddings involving gender, race, religion, and other social constructs. Fortunately, researchers have devised methods towards debiasing these word representations for both binary and multi-class bias attributes, such as gender, race, and religion. More recently, sentence-level representations such as Elmo and Bert have become the preferred choice in NLP. While some methods were proposed to debias these word-level embeddings, there is a need to perform debiasing at the sentence level, given the recent shift towards these contextualized sentence representations. Debiasing sentence representations is difficult for two reasons. Firstly, it is usually unfeasible to fully retrain many of these state-of-the-art sentence embedding models, since they are trained on massive amounts of text using many resources. As a result, it is difficult to retrain a new sentence encoder whenever a new source of bias is uncovered from data. We therefore focus on post hoc debiasing techniques, which simply add a post-training debiasing step to these sentence representations before they are used in downstream tasks. In contrast, several existing works require retraining or fine-tuning these sentence encoders using augmented training data or modified training objectives to ensure fairness. Secondly, these sentences usually display a large variety in how they are composed from individual words. This variety is driven by many factors such as topics, individuals, settings, and even differences between spoken and written text. As a result, it is difficult to scale these traditional word-level debiasing approaches to sentences. While some work has studied the use of simple templates to measure bias, for example, converting the word-level concepts in the wheat tests, such as Katie and Adam, to template-based sentences such as this is Katie and this is Adam, we show that these are suboptimal for estimating and reducing bias in sentence representations. In this paper, as a step towards generalizing debiasing methods to sentence representations, we aim to capture the various ways in which biased attribute words can be used in natural sentences. Our approach, like the baselines, start with a set, we start with a set of biased attribute words that are indicative of biased attributes such as gender or religion. Next, a core step in our approach involves contextualizing these biased attribute words to sentences to estimate the bias subspace for these sentences. In order to estimate this bias subspace accurately, we hypothesize that it is important to use sentence templates that are as diverse as possible to account for all occurrences of that word in its surrounding context. To capture this variety in syntax across sentences, we use large text corpora to find naturally occurring sentences. These naturally occurring sentences therefore become our sentence templates. To use these templates to generate new sentences, we replace words representing a single class with another. For example, a sentence containing the male term he is used to generate a new sentence by replacing it with the corresponding female term she. We investigate a total of five text sources spanning written, spoken, formal and informal text across a variety of topics and lengths. We found that this choice of text sources provided both quantity and diversity in the contextualization process. Now that we have contextualized all biased words into sentences, we pass these sentences through a pre-trained sentence encoder such as BERT to obtain sentence representations. We collect a set of representations for each bias attribute. For example, when dealing with gen gender bias, R1 would define the space of sentence representations in the male context, while R2 would define the space of sentence representations with the female context. Following existing work, the bias subspace is then given by the first k components of principal component analysis 
to discover the most important components in the subspace. Finally, the bias components are removed from sentences that are not gendered and should not contain any gender bias. For example, I am a doctor, or that nurse is taking care of the patient, by removing the projection onto this bias subspace. To evaluate the effectiveness of our approach, we compare to several baseline methods for debiasing. The first one is BERT word, which obtains a debiased sentence representation from the average of debiased BERT word representations by simply applying existing word level debiasing methods. The second baseline is what we call BERT simple, which uses these simple sentence templates to debias BERT sentence representations. We measure bias using a sentence level extension of the word embedding association test. We find that our approach achieves a lower average absolute effect size and outperforms the baselines based on debiasing at the word level and, also, uh, and averaging across all these words. This indicates that it is not sufficient to simply debias words and that biases in a sentence could arise from the debiased word constituents. In comparison with Bert Simple, we observe that using diverse sentence templates makes a difference on how well we can remove biases from sentence representations. This supports our hypothesis that using increasingly diverse templates estimates a bias subspace that generalizes better to different words in their context. We further test the importance of sentence templates through two experiments. Firstly, we ask, how does the number of sentence templates impact debiasing performance? To answer this, we begin with the largest domain, Wikitext2, and divide it into five equal partitions. And we increase the number of randomly sampled partitions used for estimating the bias subspace for debiasing. We observe a decreasing trend in the effect size as increasing subsets of the data is used. Using a larger number of templates, also reduces the variance and improves the stability of the algorithm. Secondly, we ask, how does the number of domains that sentence templates are extracted from impact debiasing performance? We fix the total number of sentence templates for each domain and randomly sample the number of domains each template are drawn from in order to estimate the bias subspace for debiasing. Again, we draw similar observations. There is a decreasing trend in effect size as templates are drawn from more domains, and using a larger number of domains again reduces the variance in effect size and improves the stability of the algorithm. These two controlled experiments allow us to conclude that it is important to use a large variety of templates across different domains to estimate the bias subspace. As a qualitative analysis of the biasing process, we visualize how the distances between sentence representations change after the debiasing process is performed. We average the sentence representations of a concept such as man, woman, science, and art across its context, which are sentence templates, and we plot the TSNE embeddings of these points in 2D space. We observe that BERT average representations of science and technology in these start up closer to the man, while literature and art are closer to the woman. After debiasing, these non-gender specific concepts such as science and art become more equidistant to both man and woman average concepts. To ensure that debiasing does not hurt the performance on downstream tasks, we also report the performance of our debiased BERT and ELMO methods on SST and COLA by training a linear classifier on top of these debiased BERT and ELMO sentence representations. We observe that the downstream task performance does show a small decrease ranging from 1 to 3% after the debiasing process, which we believe is reasonable. For SST, it has been shown that central analysis data sets do indeed have labels that correlate with gender information and therefore contain gender bias. As a result, we do expect small decreases in accuracy after debiasing. We do note a couple of limitations of our existing approach. Firstly, 
We know that our method currently only applies to removing associations between sentences. However, it is also crucial to remove bias in sentence generation itself, especially for large pre-trained models, which have been shown to exhibit significant biases in generated text. We believe that some of our ideas in evaluating and removing sentence association biases could be useful in removing biases from sentence generation as well. Secondly, bias should only be removed from words and sentences that are neutral with respect to that attribute. For example, gender bias should not be removed from the word grandmother or the sentence, she gave birth to me. Previous work on debiasing word representations was able to tackle this issue by listing all of these attribute-specific words and only debiasing the remaining words. However, given the complexity of natural sentences, it is extremely hard to identify the set of neutral sentences as well as its component. Therefore, in downstream tasks, we remove biases from all sentences which could possibly harm downstream task performance if a dataset contains a significant number of non-neutral sentences. In conclusion, we investigated the post hoc removal of social biases from pre-trained sentence representations. We propose a sent debias method that accurately captures the bias subspace of sentence representations by using a diverse set of templates from naturally occurring text corpora. Our experiments show that we can remove biases that occur in birth and elbow while preserving performance on downstream tasks. We also demonstrate the importance of using a large number of diverse sentence templates when estimating these bias subspaces. If you're interested, please check out our paper and code for more details. Thank you.